Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. Thanks for listening. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I just want to say that I have had like quite an increase in the people that have watched my videos on YouTube. I used to literally get like 50 views per podcast episode, but now we're at like five or 600 views. So guys, thank you so much if you watch on YouTube. If you don't know, you could literally watch this podcast on YouTube if you want to. You'll just see my face and you'll see me talking. So guys, today's another episode. Okay. And I really want to focus during this season of slower months. I really want to focus on like things that you can do to grow your business. Okay. So that's kind of my theme for, I feel like the month of February, I really want to focus just on growth and you guys like focusing on the business side of things. So you can really just take things to the next level. Okay. Cause that's my goal in making this podcast. Like I want you to be able to use this podcast as like a tool and a reference to look back on and just to, I want this to be a resource for you. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about marketing and it's, it's a topic that it's very like broad and generic and I've probably talked about it before, but it's a topic that needs to be talked about regardless because it is literally how you get booked. Okay. So before we get into that, I have some life updates for you guys. Um, just because I feel like I haven't shared my updates in like two weeks. So here we go. I wrote them all down, so it should be pretty quick. So currently, as you're listening to this podcast episode, I am in Santa Barbara. Actually, I think I'm going to be like on a plane home, actually. But I um, had a wedding in Santa Barbara over the weekend, and I got there a little bit early and flew into Burbank, so the LA area, and was hanging out with my family there. And then me and Charlie drove up to Santa Barbara for the wedding and then stuck around there and are flying home today. So it's very exciting. Um, I just love the idea of traveling and shooting a wedding. I just feel like it makes it just more like fun. Like at least for me, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I'm traveling for a wedding. Like this is so cool. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling about all of it. I do always get nervous just like traveling with all of my gear and stuff. I I just get a little, I guess like antsy or almost like I, I think of like the worst case scenario of what could happen. And usually that worst case scenario is like them forcing me to put all of my photography gear in a suitcase and then forcing me to check it and then my bag getting lost and losing everything. That's kind of like the worst case scenario for me. But um, yeah, so currently on my way home from California. And um, after that, so this upcoming week, I am actually taking Charlie on a snowboard trip because it's his birthday on the 20th. And I think that's like a Monday or something, but I'm taking him like the weekend before his birthday to go snowboarding. He is obsessed with snowboarding. I am not as obsessed as he is, but it's one of those things where like, you know, he loves it. So I'm going to try to love it too. So I do snowboard a little. I'm not great, but I'm taking him to go snowboarding for like three days in a row. I literally think he's going to like die of excitement because it's just like his ideal birthday trip. So yeah, we're going a couple hours north of where we live in Michigan. So not like anywhere crazy, but we're going snowboarding. So it's definitely going to be a vibe. I feel like I'm much more of like a, a ski lodge girly than I am like a hit the slopes type of girl, but I can be both, you know, I, I can do it. Um, so that's it for my like personal life updates, but I do have some exciting business announcements that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I swear all my stuff that I want to say in my podcast gets announced like on my Instagram first. So like, if you want to hear it first, it's always on my Instagram. But with that being said, um, I did just announce that my new course is launching on February 24th. And it's a wedding course. So it's specifically for wedding photographers. 
And basically I had someone last year while I was shooting a bunch of weddings, I had a videographer literally follow me around and film me from start to finish of a wedding day. And, um, with that footage, I also have like commentary and talking about like how to prep for weddings and like what I do, you know, all, like different stuff about engagement sessions, second shooters, whatever. Um, so it's basically like a course if you are getting into wedding photography or like want to like, or just want to like freshen up on your skills. This is like the course for that. It also is like a lower price point. So it's not going to be as expensive as my other courses. Um, so I just wanted like a resource out there for anyone that wants to get into wedding photography or already is in wedding photography, but wants to like, you know, refresh the skills. That's what this course is for. Um, I will say like, I, there's over like, I think like two hours of just like wedding content alone. And it's funny because when I first started photography, like when I was getting into weddings, I found this YouTube video of this guy and he literally attached a GoPro on top of his camera. And it was like the longest video ever. It was like multiple hours long, like four or five or something. And I watched the entire thing and it was literally just like... <laughs> So much of it could have been cut out. Like I really did not need to watch all of it, but it was really helpful for me to watch this video of like someone shooting and hearing what they say and seeing the angles they get. So that's kind of like what I wanted to do with this course was just to show you like in these moments, here's what I'm doing, you know, that, that type of thing. And like, here's how to communicate this. Um, so yeah. I think it's going to be good. Um, I also did just announce my travel dates, which is super exciting. We are going a lot of very exciting places in 2023. So um, if you want to check those out, those are on my Instagram and we can like meet up. And if you want me to take photos of you, you can book a session with me. That's like really what I want to do is just like take photos of people while I'm on my road trip and we're going like a couple international places. So with that being said, let's get into the meat of today's episode. I don't really like that. The meat. I feel like I wish there was a better term I could use for that. Let's get into the 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 good stuff. Okay. So we're talking about marketing. And because it is slow season for most people, now is the time to work on your marketing. Okay. Like the best businesses are built during slow season the best businesses are built, not when it's busy, but when there's nothing to do, that's when you're building up your business to really succeed during those slower months or during the busier months. Sorry. So when we're talking about marketing, first, I want to just introduce marketing to you guys. If you don't know what marketing is, or just kind of like, I guess it's just like in my head, how I view marketing. Marketing is basically how people find you and how people hear about you. So this is super important for any business. Like you're only as good as the opportunities that you get and the people that you're able to shoot. And like, you're not going to get those opportunities. You're not going to get those bookings if you're not marketing yourself. Like how are people hearing about you? Okay. That's literally like half the game. Like you got to take good photos, but you have to make sure those photos reach the right people that want to book you. So when I think of marketing, there is this picture of a funnel in my head. And if you've ever studied marketing or like done research on marketing before, everyone always talks about a funnel. Okay. And I'm going to talk about the funnel as well. So when you think of the funnel in marketing, you know, there's three different parts of the funnel. There's the top of the funnel, right? That's where you're just like, you know, that it's very wide, very big. And then there's like the middle part of the funnel. Okay. And then there's the bottom part of the funnel where like you get the results, I guess. I don't know what we're pouring into this funnel. Like in my head, I'm picturing like pouring like olive oil into a funnel. So just picture whatever you want in your head. Um, so when we're thinking of the funnel, the very top of that funnel is going to be, you know, it's a very wide audience. So think about like your biggest reach right now? Where do you reach the most people? Like, is it on social media? Is it through word of mouth? Whatever. That's going to be the top of the funnel. For me, my, the top of my funnel really is on social media. I feel like I reach the most people there. Um, then we're going to work down to the middle of the funnel. And those are people who 
um, you know, they know about you, they're invested in your brand, but maybe they haven't like paid for anything yet, or they haven't booked anything with you. Those are, those are the people at the middle of the funnel. They're definitely like more committed to you and your brand than the people at the top. You know, maybe they've visited your website before. Maybe they're on your email list. Like those are people that are kind of in the middle of the funnel. They, I feel like they could go either way, right? You know, they could book with you or they cannot book with you. Then at the very bottom of that funnel, those are going to be paying customers. So those are people who have decided like, yes, I want your services. I want to work with you. This is an important like visualization to have when you're thinking of marketing because you want to take people through this funnel process. Okay. Like you don't want to have 2 million followers on TikTok, but then literally you lose everyone at the top of the funnel and you don't have any middle or bottom steps in your business. Okay. So you really have to intentionally think of these steps in order to get people to that bottom step, which is paying customers, people that want to work with you. So with that being said, we're going to talk about different ways to market yourself and where each of these different avenues or like different platforms, I guess, where they fit into this funnel. So there's a few different ways to market yourself. We're going to cover four different ways. The first is through word of mouth or referrals. So that is a very old fashioned way to market yourself, but it is effective. Um, social media slash digital marketing. I would say like those are kind of the same category. Social media definitely is a beast of its own. And if you know me, I love to talk about social media. So we'll definitely talk about it in a minute. Um, SEO. So search engine optimization. That's another way to market yourself. And then paid ads, um, which I feel like I think I think I have like talked about my opinion on paid ads before. But if I haven't, or like, if you want a refresher, I'm going to give you, give you that as well. So let's think back to that funnel real quick. Um, when we're thinking about the funnel, the top of the funnel is how people find you, you know, it's going to be your biggest audience. So I do find that social media or like SEO typically is going to be the top of the funnel for you. So then let's get into that middle of the funnel. I do find that paid ads and like your website is going to be that middle part of the funnel. And your website isn't necessarily like a means of marketing. It's more like a tool or like a resource that you point people to once you market to them. Um, And then at the bottom of that funnel, obviously, is like paying customers. So we've already talked about that. That's not really like a marketing strategy necessarily. So I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I actually do have a degree (laughs) and I have a degree in digital marketing. So business administration, digital marketing is my degree. And I do feel like I learned quite a bit about marketing in college. Some of it was helpful. And then other parts I just felt like was completely irrelevant. And I was like, okay, I don't really need to know this. But with that being said, I feel like a lot of what I learned, I am currently applying in my business and I do feel like it laid a really good foundation for me. Um, So we're going to obviously talk through these four different ways to market yourself. But if you do find yourself being like, I want to learn more about marketing strategies as a whole and just like the business side of things, I definitely would recommend like going and maybe doing like a masterclass course on marketing or, you know, like watching YouTube videos just doing a little bit more research on that because marketing is so important. And I really do feel like it is the backbone to running a successful business. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in marketing, like we're going to talk about some things, but there's so much more to it, especially strategy wise. So I would highly encourage you go do some research if you want to keep learning about this after the episode. So we're going to start by talking about word of mouth. And word of mouth is truly, in my opinion, one of the most effective ways to market yourself. I mentioned earlier, it's like a very old fashioned marketing strategy, but there's a reason that it's still a thing. It's because it's effective and it works. So word of mouth essentially is someone hearing about you through someone else. So, you know, a friend, whatever, could be like someone that maybe they follow or something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone that they actually communicate and talk to, but maybe it's someone that they just like consume their content 
or like are on an email list or something like that. Like that is kind of word of mouth. And I do find that social media does play a part in word of mouth. Like if someone posts about something that can lead to a word of mouth effect where you heard it from someone else. It's not like you're hearing it directly from the brand or directly from the photographer. You're hearing it from someone that isn't the photographer, which is more valuable and more effective because it's a testimonial and it's proving that not only do, you know, me as the photographer, I think I'm a great photographer, but once I hear someone else say that I'm a good photographer, like that, that is word of mouth. You know, if Susie over there wants to book me as a photographer, she saw a post on my Instagram, whatever, but like, she wasn't super sure about it. If she hears from her friend that I shot her friend's wedding and it was a great experience. Susie is like definitely going to book with me at that point because she's heard it firsthand from one of her friends. It just makes you more credible when you're utilizing word of mouth. So word of mouth is truly a snowball effect. Okay. If you get in with the right person and if you like give the right person a good experience, they will continue to refer you and get you bookings And it's not a great strategy to like rely on one person for all your bookings. But like I have had instances where literally like, you know, just one person books with me and then I booked thing after thing after thing because of that. Um, And it it, it reminds me of this bride that I booked. um, This is back in like 2020. She booked me like last minute kind of on a whim because like something happened. Her initial photographer backed out or something like that. And she booked me. And then from that wedding, I have shot like three bridesmaids, like literally three of the bridesmaids that were in that wedding I've shot. Um, And it just kind of goes to show like once someone trusts you and once you're in with like a friend group or like um, a circle of people or, you, you know, you just establish that trust and you prove like I'm a good photographer and you can trust me, you are going to get those bookings. Um, And I think a lot of it is a result of your actions in person. So do not take lightly those interactions that you have with a bridesmaid or with a mother or a father, a grandpa, whoever, like do not take those conversations lightly or just kind of brush them off. Like be really intentional with the people that you're meeting at weddings and shoots. If someone brings along their friend on a shoot, like make sure you are giving them that same client experience that you're giving your clients because you just never know the effect that someone's going to have. I have shot so many weddings where I'll have like just a random person kind of befriend me and like come up to me and talk to me. And that person's ended up following me on Instagram and like replying to my stuff and is like, Oh, I'm going to yet, you know, use you when I get married. And then someone has actually used me when they get married. So you, you just never know who you're talking to. Okay. That, that is one point I wanted to make about word of mouth. Word of mouth is definitely a long-term goal. So like I mentioned, it is like a snowball effect. It just keeps going, but it is like a long-term snowball effect. So it's not like this snowball that's growing exponentially super fast. It really does take a little bit more time, but it is so worth it if you put in the time and energy. I do feel like the best clients come from word of mouth referrals because they're more trustworthy and it's like they've already had someone that's had a great experience with you. And so they already know what they can expect, you know, firsthand they've seen it. So, um, I just feel like word of mouth clients are like, I'm just like, yes, I want to work with you. Like, you know, someone I've worked with in the past, like, let's do it. That's kind of like my vibe on that. Um, when you are thinking about word of mouth clients and word of mouth referrals, it's something you should always be working on. It shouldn't just be like, uh, Oh, I worked on that last year. I'm not working on it this year. Like it should be a system that you have in place that continues to kind of run for itself a little bit. So, um, automatic emails being sent to people, checking in, sending guides to people, like hopping on phone calls, like meeting up in person, helping with timeline. Like those are experience things that you need to be doing every single year with every single client, regardless of like how you feel about it. Like it really is super important for getting more bookings. So how can you be working on word of mouth 
marketing right now. Okay. That's kind of like my point in all of this. Cause I mentioned earlier, like it's slow season. I want you to be working on your business. So how can you be working on this literally right now? Well, I have a couple of things for you, little pieces of homework. We love homework, don't we? Um, I actually literally didn't realize that owning a business was going to entail like so much homework. It's not necessarily work. It's, it's like tasks or like, like right now it's like tax season and I have to like come up with all these documents and like I have a whole checklist of things I got to do. And I'm like, I thought I was done with homework. You're never done. You're never done. Okay. So here's your homework. Um, one, you can send client gifts. This is really going to help with word of mouth referrals. If you send a cute gift to someone, maybe they post it on their story, they tag you. That's a referral. Um, you know, if you send a client gift and someone just really loves receiving gifts, like that's going to really, you know, help someone feel loved and help them feel like they loved their experience with you. Um, you can ask for reviews from people, um, by getting reviews that does improve your word of mouth. It also shows you're just like a credible business, credible person to work with. You can also just ask for feedback too. Um, with the people you've worked with previously, literally ask them like, is there anything you wish I would have done that I didn't do? You need to be in a place where you're willing to accept that criticism because that criticism and those key points of communication are going to give you things that you can improve on so that you can have a better client experience in the future and like really get those word of mouth referrals going. If someone feels like they didn't have enough communication from you and they just didn't know what to expect and they kind of felt like in the dark the whole entire time, that's a good indication to you that you need to be communicating more with your client, sending more emails, um, maybe offering more phone calls to people, communicating more clearly what the process is going to be like beforehand, just kind of like giving guidance throughout your process. Like when you ask for feedback, you are going to get feedback. So just be prepared to get that feedback, but it is going to be helpful for sure. You can ask for referrals. And if you ask people to refer you to other people, like maybe offer a bonus or incentive, I haven't found this to be super effective, but it is like a little bit effective. You know, people will do stuff for money. So it's like if you offer $50 for people that book weddings with you that were referrals, like, I don't know, give it a try. I, I, I can't say firsthand that it works, but it is a good idea. Okay. And the last thing is tagging clients on social media. Um, when you tag people in things, it gives them the opportunity to repost it to their story, gives them an opportunity to add on their two cents about your, their session or their wedding or whatever. Um, you know, if you tag someone on Facebook, most of the time it does pop up on their timeline and like their friends can see that they were tagged in something. If you post it on Instagram, maybe invite them as like a collaborator. So it shows up to all their followers. There are things that you can do to help you get word of mouth referrals. And those are just a few of them. Okay. We're going to talk about social media now, which is another means of marketing. Um, so on social media, we're really just going to be talking about Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, I don't have a lot to say about each of the platforms specifically because I feel like I talk about them all the time, but I do have just like a few tips and things that I'm going to say. So with social media, I do find that social media is a short-term result that needs a lot of consistency. So when we think of something like word of mouth, that is much more of a long game. You know, you're working on it year after year. Same with SEO. It's like, that's something that you're building up slowly on social media. You are kind of building up a presence, but that buildup takes so much consistency that, you know, there's just not, not as long of a shelf life with the content that you're creating with SEO. You can create a blog post and you know, it'll be effective for like a year or a couple of years, but with social media, like you don't have a post from last year that is still getting likes. Okay. It's just not, that's just not a thing. It's just not how the algorithm works or how social media works. So you kind of have to view it differently, more like short term, minimal effort, little things constantly rather than like, Oh, here's a big piece of effort every once in a while. So a few strategies for social media. First and most obvious one, you've heard me say it, post videos. 
I'm looking dead into the camera right now. Post more videos, guys. Video marketing is the way to go. It's the way everyone is going right now. Post more videos, okay? Utilize multiple platforms and direct people to your other platforms. So for example, TikTok and Instagram. On Instagram, pull people to your TikTok. Like post your videos on your story. Be like, oh, follow me over here for different content, whatever. On TikTok, same thing. Like direct people over to your Instagram. Um, you know, it could be as simple as just having your Instagram linked on TikTok because there are there is an opportunity on TikTok in your bio to literally have in, your Instagram linked. Um, so just make sure all of that set up and direct people across to multiple platforms. I find that if one person's following you, let's say on TikTok, but then they go over to your Instagram and also follow you, they are doubling the content that they want to see from you. And they're kind of like double committing to your brand. And I feel like they're much less likely to unfollow you on both platforms. You know, it's just like, once you follow someone on multiple platforms, like you're there, you're a fan, you're a customer that I literally am a perfect example of this. Like there are so many people that I started following on TikTok that I then went and found them on Instagram and I follow them on Pinterest and watch their vlogs and listen to their podcast. Like, yeah, that's just kind of how it works. But I do feel like it's a good strategy to kind of push people to all of those different platforms. Um, a good strategy for social media is to make it fun and to be yourself. Um, you know, I think a lot of social media right now, like is just taken way too seriously. Like you just have to have fun with it, post things that you enjoy, create things that you enjoy, because that's going to radiate energy that people are attracted to and that people want to be a part of. If you're having fun with it, people can tell. Okay. And the last strategy for social media is to always point people to your website. So for me, at the end of the day, my strategy is always like get people onto my website. I want them to get my free guides. I want them to listen to my podcast, but I want them to figure all of that out from just going to my website. So making your website really accessible and just always directing people there is like the best strategy because your website should be a place full of info that people can find out about you. And just like, just like this plethora of information and like facts and like resources. Like it should just be like dripping with gold content that they want to consume. Um, so that's kind of why you're going to push people to your website. It's going to like create more of a concrete relationship between the two of you. So very quickly, I'm going to talk about each of the different platforms. We're going to first talk about Instagram. And the main thing I want to say here is there's three different types of content that's really big on Instagram right now. And you need to view all those different types of content differently with different motives for each one of them. So there's stories, posts, and reels. Okay. We all know this stories, posts, and reels. Each one of them reaches a different audience. And I'm going to explain the audience that it reaches and how you need to create your content for those types of people. So stories are first. Stories are for people who follow you. Do you ever go and watch a random person's story? Usually not unless you're like doing a little FBI stalking type of thing. But for the most part, you're not going and like looking at other people's stories that you don't follow. So stories really are for people that do follow you. And with that in mind, create like content that is for more like a friend type of content, not so much like business content, but like a healthy mix of like, I'm a business, but I'm also a person. Like you can be my friend. We can be clients and photographer, like just make it a place that's like friendly and fun. Okay. Then let's talk about posts. So posts, I'm not talking about reels. I'm talking about like carousels, static posts that stay on your feed. These also most likely are going to be for the people who follow you, but a little bit for non-followers as well. I don't know if you guys ever like go and like look at your analytics on social media, but I find with all of my feed posts, it's like 25% people that don't follow me and 75% people that do follow me. So you do want to make it a little bit geared towards non-followers, but for the most part, like it is mostly for people that do follow you. So work on establishing that relationship, creating value in your feed posts. 
occasionally you might get a feed post that kind of goes viral and like, you know, gets more likes than usual. Usually in that case, that's a result of the explore page and you might get more non followers on that post. Then there's reels. Reels 100% are usually for the people that don't follow you. I find that like, like, 70% of my audience on reels is people that don't follow me. Um, Obviously, I think the way that the algorithm works is at first pushes it out to people who do follow you. And then based on the response it gets there, then it's going to go over to the reels page and be shown to people who don't follow you. So it starts with people who do follow you. And then based on the reaction there and the engagement, then it's going to go over to the reels page. So... I think you kind of have to be strategic with it. You know, if you're going to post a reel, like make sure your followers still engage with it and still have something to say about it. But like, it should also be engaging for people who don't follow you as well. And really that should be your main priority is hitting the people that don't follow you with those. So let's talk about TikTok now. Two things to say about TikTok. As a photographer, always pay attention to what's trending. That's the name of the game. We all know this trends, doing things that are relevant. It's hard and it's a little bit annoying, but like that, that is the key to a successful business is being willing to adapt and being willing to be versatile and stay with trends if you need to. Um, I'm not necessarily saying you have to follow every single trend that's out there. Like there are some trends that are just, they come and go way too quickly. There's way too many trends out there. So you kind of need to feel the ones that like, you know, go with your business that kind of just come alongside your business, not the ones that you're like reaching a limb out for this trend. You know, if it doesn't really line up with your content, don't do it. But like always pay attention to what's trending so that you can increase your chances of going viral or reaching a different audience. Um, The best setup for TikTok is always behind the scenes and showing results or storytelling. Those are like the surefire types of videos that I feel like will never stop being a good strategy. So the first one behind the scenes and showing results of a shoot, it's very simple, but I do feel like I see those videos quite frequently. It's just an interesting type of video, like to see the behind the scenes, see how it is all set up and then to see the results. That is fascinating. It's just a fascinating concept. Being a photographer, guys, is actually interesting, okay? Like, (laughs) you might be like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling a little bit mundane right now. No, people actually think that photography is super interesting. Um, Everyone has phones. Everyone has access to photography, but not everyone goes and does it like we do, like professional photographers do it, or even if you're not professional, you know, someone that just like cares about it a little bit more than other people. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably care about photography more than the average person. Okay. So with that being said, like it's an interesting concept to show the process. That's something a lot of people are fascinated in. So don't undervalue that. Use that setup and that template for your videos. And then also storytelling. I feel like that's kind of where a lot of social media started and a lot of video content started was through storytelling. So there's a lot of different ways to storytell, but that's a really good strategy for TikTok. Okay. Let's talk about Pinterest. Two things I have to say about Pinterest. One is to use idea pins. I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast before. Idea pins are like being pushed so hard by Pinterest right now. So utilize idea pins, really push out the pins idea pins often if you can. Um, With idea pins, use location keywords and then also keywords that kind of describe the image. So you want to hit like two different um, searches when you're creating your idea pins. The first search is for like a specific location. So um, Los Angeles, California, or even more specific than that, like you can say like Santa Monica or like a very specific area like that, like not as big as the city, I guess, maybe even smaller than that, like a specific location. And then also like describe the images. So Santa Monica engagement session beach, you know, like something like that. It kind of just describes the photos and it's going to be searchable. Um, so that's, those are my two cents with Pinterest. 
Pinterest is popping off right now. And like, I feel like Pinterest is, it's just like a bunch of photography clients sitting there waiting for, to find a photographer, especially wedding photographers. Like people, when they get engaged first, always, always go right to Pinterest and start making boards, right? Like that's, that's what everyone does when they first get engaged. So like, why not be on that platform and hit them right when they get engaged? I don't know why we're not doing this people. Come on, let's do it. Let's go. Let's talk about Facebook. Facebook is something that I'm not, (laughs) I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the most familiar with Facebook. I am not the queen of Facebook. Unfortunately, I am not even the princess of Facebook. I am more of just like this background person on Facebook. I, I barely get on Facebook. But what I do know is Facebook can be really effective for word of mouth. So I mentioned earlier, if you tag someone in something on Facebook, it's going to show up on that person's feed into their friends. So keep that in mind. You know, maybe one step in your photo delivery process is just like, you know, giving previews and then posting those previews on Facebook and tagging your clients and just, you know, kind of giving a fun little spiel about why it was a good time to shoot their photos or something like that. It's a good, it's a good strategy. Um, that's, that's like my only strategy basically that I have for Facebook. Okay. So we're going to talk about SEO and then paid ads. So SEO If you don't know, SEO basically stands for search engine optimization. It is basically ranking high on Google for specific searches. Um, So that's the goal when you are targeting SEO, you want to rank for a specific search. So for example, Los Angeles wedding photographer, if that is what you want to rank high for, like that is what you're going to be targeting through SEO. Um, so SEO was a long game and it's definitely something that takes multiple, multiple years, similar to word of mouth, but I would say it's a little less relational and it's more, um, you know, it's not something that you necessarily have to do yourself. You can definitely outsource SEO. Um, and a lot of people are like, okay, how do you do SEO? Like it's this big cloud mystical thing, but like, how do you actually do it? You do it through blogging mostly and then a little bit through like metadata on your photos on your website and then a little bit through like just headers throughout your website as well. But SEO is basically like you want your website to pop up for certain Google searches. So it's all in your website. So blogging is the main thing for SEO. You want to blog two different things. One is your galleries and your sessions. And when you blog your galleries and your sessions, make sure that your title for that blog is like created for SEO purposes. You're not just saying Katrina and Dave, like you are saying Malibu engagement session, Katrina and Dave, you know, you're really helping yourself with SEO there. Okay. You kind of, you kind of see how I finesse that a little bit. SEO is all about finessing keywords into little areas of your website sneakily. Okay. It's like Google wants its searches to be like authentic. So it kind of wants you to sneakily use these keywords. You know, it's fun. This is a fun guessing game for everyone, right? (laughs) So you're going to blog your galleries. You're also just going to blog things. You're going to blog for like words and you're going to just write blog posts, not necessarily like full of a hundred photos, but you know, a couple photos here and there, but there's really more meat to your blog article when you're blogging for SEO, but like it's a wordy blog. So this, this can be more of like any topic you want it to be. It could be, um, Oh, I don't know five places to do your engagement photos in Malibu. It could be, um, you know, five hikes to do for your elopement in the Grand Tetons. Whatever you're blogging about, it needs to be like based on the location and like the area that you want to 
pop up for in searches. So a lot of local photographers will just use their local city or like a city nearby. If you're a traveling photographer, that's a little bit different if you want to get more into destinations. If that's the case, I would say focus more on getting the content for specific places like uh, the Grand Tetons, Alaska, Hawaii, Italy, wherever it is you want to go. And then like blog about those places. Um, I, I saw this photographer, I think it was on TikTok, who created a blog post and it was like five places to get, do your elopement in Italy. But then they took that blog post and turned it into a TikTok and kind of green screened the blog post behind them, um, which I thought was really smart because then the blog post helps you with SEO, but then you're putting it on TikTok as well. And then I literally think he booked like multiple weddings there because of this video, which is just insane to me. So just an idea. Okay. We're just throwing out ideas at this point. When you do create a bunch of blogs, you can then use those blogs as additional content. So sorry, I just got like frazzled. I have like this, (laughs) this other phone that I don't really use like for anything besides business. And it just... I, fr- I don't know how to turn the ringer off and it just like went off and it just freaked me out because <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to it. So when you're writing these blogs, you can use that content for Pinterest, for captions on Instagram. Um, you can even use some of the photos for carousels on Instagram. You can use a blog for like a story that you tell on TikTok, like content can be reused. And I really feel like starting with the content in a blog And then distributing it out like on your different platforms, it's a good strategy. And you don't have to like think about your content too hard. Like once you have it down in a blog format, use that so many times and just recycle that content because it's, it's content you've already made. It's already there. It's less brain power. Okay. It's a work smarter, not harder. Um, A good example of SEO is for me, I wrote this blog post forever ago And it was this wedding that I did at this local venue. And I actually ended up shooting this wedding for super cheap because I just wanted an experience at this venue. And I blogged about it. And I kept getting people who would find it on Pinterest because I also put the photos on Pinterest and use the venue's name for like keywords and stuff. And then I was getting people from there. They'd go to the website and then I'd start getting bookings for there. And I literally shoot there all the time. And now it's like, I think I'm rated like ranked like top three or something for this venue. Like when you search the venue, it's like the venues website, it's like the not, and then it's my website. So it's something that took a while. Literally it took me like four years to do that. But since I've worked at that venue so many more times, I keep blogging about it, which continually helps my ranking and brings me up in the ranking for that specific venue. Okay. Last thing we're going to talk about is paid ads. If I've talked about this before, I'm sorry if you have to re-listen to me rant about it, but honestly, I don't love paid ads. You can run paid advertisements all you want, but I feel like the money that you put into that could be put towards new gear and you could take better photos and then like market yourself in other ways through social media by having better photos, like, or like, I don't know, I just feel like unless you really know what you're doing and you're like an expert at it, it's really difficult to have highly effective ads. I do feel like ads can be effective if you do them right. And one way of doing them right is by retargeting and like targeting people when they view certain content or when they go to your website or when they sign up for your email list, then you target them with ads. Um, lots of brands do this. You know, it's very common. If you go to Uggs.com and look at their ultra mini platform Uggs, you probably the next day or even like in 20 minutes are going to get an ad for ultra mini platform Uggs from Ugg.com. If someone views content and doesn't buy it, but then sees it in an ad like 20 minutes later, like the next day, like you're going to be thinking about it more and it might solidify you to go and buy it, honestly. So that could be a strategy. Personally, I don't feel like people are booking photographers through ads, like at least an ad that they know is an ad. Like if I see something that's an ad, like 
I don't usually want, especially if it's a service, I'm usually not booking that service. But if someone doesn't know it's an ad, so like, for example, like The Knot or Wedding Wire, those are websites that like the people that are searching on there, they don't realize that a lot of the vendors that are on there pay to be on that platform. So, um, yeah, I think paid ads aren't necessarily the way to go. I think I've also mentioned the knot in my experience with the knot before, but I'll, I'll kind of like dive into that real quick again for you guys. So my first year doing photography, wedding photography, I was on the knot And it was so helpful for me. I booked like 15 weddings from it. It was great. The next year I was like, oh, I'm going to stay on the knot. And I maybe booked like five weddings from it. But at that point I was like, okay, I'm paying like one wedding's worth. Like what I charge for one wedding is what I'm paying yearly to be on the site. And I think I want to just focus more on like getting my clients more organically. Now that I have the portfolio and the word of mouth going, like that was kind of my strategy. So I quit it and I still booked a ton. Um, so I think it was helpful for me my first year and my sister actually is just getting into wedding planning and she's on the knot as well. And she's found it helpful for her first year. I think she's booked at least four or five weddings from there, but I do feel like there comes a certain point where you outgrow paid ads and it's just like, you don't need to get your name out there anymore to complete strangers. You almost want to focus on followers and like people that are already warmed up to your brand, whether that's a friend of someone that you did their wedding or someone that's following you on social media, those are going to be more of the people that you want to be targeting as far as marketing goes, because they're already warmed up to you and they already know what it's like to kind of work with you. Like they kind of have seen you and your brand. So that's my two cents on paid ads. I know people who have had paid ads work out great for them. So I don't want to like dog on paid ads, but I just feel like unless you are like, if you're targeting a local audience, like not like a destination area, I don't really feel like paid ads are necessary. I feel like it's way more effective to just focus on word of mouth and like social media and even SEO. But like, if you're doing something more like destination focused, you know, let's say you want to be a Bali wedding photographer, like shoot a bunch of weddings in Bali. Like then I would say maybe try paid ads. But for me, it's just not, not something that I really feel like I need, you know, like I feel like these other three areas, SEO, social media, and word of mouth. I feel like those are the areas that I'm most likely going to focus on because they're free and we love free marketing. Like that's, that's what we're here for. Okay, guys, I have probably talked your ear off. If you're still listening, thanks for listening. We're going to wrap it up here. Okay. I hope that this gave you a little spark to go and try some new marketing strategies. Try some things you haven't tried before. Maybe it's SEO. Maybe it's word of mouth. Maybe you need to dive into Instagram a little bit more. That's what I want you to do after listening to this episode. Go Do some things to help you improve your marketing so that in busy season, you are all set and you like, you have things built up in the back end where you can just kind of float by during busy season. Like we don't want to be worrying about marketing when you're shooting a wedding every weekend, you know? So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you love this episode. If you haven't already, I would love for you to leave me a review either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That would be amazing. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, Besides that, that's all I have for today. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and thanks for listening.